Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to walk you through Typon from Red Giant Universe. To apply Typon, I need some sort of video clip to apply it to. Here in Adobe Premiere, I'll use a black video clip, which I can create by going to File New, Black Video. With this clip selected, I can either go to the effects and locate RG Universe text and then grab Typon from this category. As a user of Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects, I could go to Window Extensions and pull up the RG Universe dashboard. This is a window that allows me to browse all of the plugins within Universe. I can roll over them to see what the effect looks like, and if I single click on any of these, it will bring me to the presets for that plugin. In the case of Typon, I can go to the Text category, locate Typon, and with my clip selected, I can either click on Apply Effect or double click on the thumbnail to apply it to my clip. There's also a number of presets to get you started in here. But let's build something from scratch rather than use a preset. So with this selected, I'll go to my Effect Controls and take a look at the interface. First, I'm going to change the text content. Obviously, we've got some placeholder text in here, so I'm going to copy and paste some text of my own into the Edit Text window. I'll access that by going to Edit Text, clicking on the Edit Text window, and replacing this text with some new text here. Note that this is also where you would change your font. I'm going to set this to a font called Input Mono Compressed. This is found in the Adobe Type Library. You can also change the overall size, color, justification, vertical and horizontal tracking as well. I'll click OK, and from here we need to animate this. Typon does a pretty specific task where it types the content on, letter by letter, with an optional cursor at the leading edge of the Typon effect. There are some other tricks it has up its sleeve, such as writing on randomly or right to left reveal, so we'll get to that in just a second. But first, let's just get this animated. So we'll go to the type on slider and set this to zero. Now I'll put my playback head where I'd like this to start, click on the stopwatch to set a keyframe, and then we'll move forward in time and change this value to 100%. So now this animates from 0% out to 100%. Notice that as I play this back, we can see the cursor, but we can also see at the end that the cursor is blinking. So let's get to modifying this cursor. I'll go to the cursor section. Note that this is where you can turn the cursor on or off. You can change the cursor type. If I'd like to change this to inverted square, let me uh, change the position of my text a little bit. If I set this to inverted square, it will actually move the cursor back one position so that we can see it overlaid to see the inverted effect. Other options we have are an underline, which is like an underscore, and a vertical line. I'll leave this set to a solid box. There's a manual offset for the cursor here as well. If you'd like to offset it from that last letter, you can do that. By default, it uses the same color as the text, but if you'd like to use a different color for the cursor, you're welcome to do so. There's a blink on and off duration. So you'll notice at the end, as the cursor sits in place, it blinks. If you'd like to have it not blink, you can simply set the off duration to zero and it will always be on. Now in terms of the overall style, let's say we'd like to give us a little bit more of a computer terminal kind of feel. I'll go to the text settings and set this to kind of a light blue. I'll go to the effects and in here we've got two different effects that we can apply. We've got a glow effect, which looks like that. And we've got a scan lines effect, which gives it that sort of computer screen kind of feel. Maybe I'll go to the cursor color and set this to something slightly different. And if I play through this, we've quickly generated this kind of terminal readout effect. Now, that's not everything that this can do. I'm going to duplicate this clip by dragging it over, holding Alt or Option, and I'll simplify this down to just one line of text. So I'll go back to Edit Text. And I'll delete lines two and three here. I'll move this position over just a little bit and raise the font size even more. Right now we are typing on left to right. 
There's another option in here, which is random. And what this does is randomly type the text on. Now, as it does that, it's holding spaces in, in place of the text so that it actually uh, keeps the letters from not squeezing together. If we'd like to change that placeholder character, I can go to the filler character here and set this to something like a dash. So now it is holding a dash for every blank character, and as it types on, it replaces the dash with the character. We can add a prefix and suffix to this. So let's say I go in here to the prefix, and I set this to a left bracket and the suffix character to a right bracket. These will be fixed and not affected by the type on animation. So now as I play this, we've got these brackets on either side, and it is typing on just like we did before. We also can randomize the text, and we can do that simply by turning up the random characters here. I'll turn that up, set a keyframe for that, and then move forward in time and have the random characters go away. So not only is it typing on and revealing randomly, it's doing so with some random letters and then they go back to the original letters. Next, I'll get rid of these characters and I just wanna point out one more thing that happens with the justification. Let's set this back to a left to right direction and I'll set the filler character back to empty. So with this left justified, it is going to type on like this, sort of holding the left position in place and typing left to right. We can set this to use a justification of center. Obviously it jumps over to the left a little bit because we changed the, its justification and where it's anchored. But you'll find that with the justification that it will start with the center and sort of spread outward like that. Now how this might look different is a little bit more obvious when I have more than one line of text. So I'm gonna go back into the text, set this back to that multi-line text. So we've got this option here where things can type out from the center like that. If you're looking for a center justification, but sort of a left to right reveal, what we can do is use a filler character that is a space. And what it's going to do is fill things in with a space and then even though we've got it centered, it will still keep everything in place. Also, make sure when you're copying and pasting your text, make sure that the font that you're using contains all of the characters that you're pasting in. This seems to be using some sort of non-standard space or something right here. So I'm just going to delete that and replace it. And also, watch out for things like smart quotes that might come from copy and paste. You'll want to replace those with regular old single or double quotes that you can type in here. There we go. I'm going to get rid of that left bracket and also that right bracket. And now we've got a centered but left to right reveal on our text. One last thing to show here is the scroll checkbox. As we've got multiple lines, we can have it scroll up as it finishes each of these lines. This is definitely an effect that I can say every motion designer or editor will have to create at least once, if not many times in their career. Creating this can be surprisingly complicated, especially if you want the flexibility of things like scrolling or replacing characters or varying the left to right direction, that kind of thing. So that is Typon from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank. We'll see you in the next video.